in early 69, I, I went to my management and said, Look, I've got this great idea, you know, and they said, well, who would write it? And I said, well, I would, you see. And they went, oh, terrific idea. And that was sort of the last I heard of it for two or three months. And then one of the managers came to me and said, um, were you serious about this idea? And I said, absolutely. He said, well, you better be because I've booked the Albert Hall. Oh, and I've booked the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra too, so <laughs> for September the 24th. Uh, this being like April, I said, are you mad? Do you know how much work is involved here? At the point when I'd done about 20 pages of full score, somebody, I think, got slightly cold feet, having booked the Albert Hall and, and the orchestra, and said, the, and the publisher said, can he actually do this, you know? And uh, my management, who, who didn't know a crotchet from a hatchet, you know, said, well, of course he can. Of course he can. No problem at all. They said, well, we, we better sort of get some expert opinion. And... The head of the publishing company uh, was a friend of, of uh, Malcolm's. So this meeting was arranged. I walked in and there was this huge jolly man, you know, saying, come in, yes, great, yes, let's have a look there. You know, and just grabbed the, the score out of my hand. Um, seven, eight seconds, said, yes, this will work very well, and flung it back at him. And that was my audition, apparently, for <laughs> to be allowed to continue to write the concerto of a group and orchestra. And I said, well, thank you very much, sir. He said, no, this is, sir. And he was enormously kind to me. And then he said, have you got a conductor? And we said, no. He said, would you like me to conduct it? And uh, in that two short minutes, he changed my life. <laughs> Cello player came up to me and said, "Excuse me, uh, John. You know, no, no maestro or anything like that. But I wasn't expecting it. Excuse me, John. What you've written here, um, it's impossible." And I was just about to flounder into sort of, "Oh dear," you know. And Malcolm came bustling over and said, "Yeah, we'll sort that out. We'll take that out now and just bow it like this, and you'll be fine." Sending the guy back into the orchestra and leaving me kind of open mouth with gratitude because I wouldn't have known how to have dealt with the situation. Like that. down in the orchestra putting notes right. He was helping with bits of the writing. It was probably the most terrifying day of my life. I was sick, physically sick from apprehension, from stomach churning and so on. And Malcolm was this wonderful, benign, roly-poly chap who went around distributing bon mot and friendship and hugs and come along, everything's gonna be fine, that kind of thing. And of course the band were, were terrified. Had it not been for us being able to look up at Malcolm and see that tower of strength holding it all together, I think it would have just fallen to bits. orchestra were treating us pretty shabbily at first, I must be honest. Malcolm was the barrier between them and us, or, or the translator, if you like. And his famous line, which he stomped his foot and banged the podium uh, um, and the lectern and said, no, 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 this will not do. You've got five young men here playing their hearts out and you're playing like a bunch of asterisks. Old English asterisks. There was a shocked silence. A couple of sniggers from the trumpet section and a lady in the cellos stormed out, and he had to come get her back and apologise for his language. But he said, you know, come on, you really, really have to uh, do better than this. This is a serious piece of music. And then the other famous thing that he said was, uh, you know, tomorrow night we're going to uh, make history, we might as well make music at the same time. <laughs>
I left, I, I went over to say goodbye and I sat next to him and he said, uh, yeah, yeah. We bloody showed him that night, didn't we? I said, yes, we did, we did. He said, and, you know. And he looked round and sort of beckoned me. I said, what? He said, you know your singer? I said, yeah. He's got a dick like a donkey. <laughs> <laughs>